Correct. One of the things I always say, Nikki, is that until people are willing to be honest about what's going on, and sometimes you're going to have to break some eggs to make an omelet, we're not going to get anywhere. No. Feelings are going to have to be hurt. They have to be hurt. In order to, to move forward in this country. We're going to have to say things that people don't like and get to, to the root of, of the issue. And I have to say that this Georgetown professor, Paul Butler, was on NPR and um, talking about what was going on in South Carolina with the Confederate flag. And then they allowed a caller to come in who expressed her pride in her Southern history in the Confederate flag. And he proceeded in a very kind way to deconstruct her. And then later on, he was on All In with Chris Hayes on MSNBC, who gave him a bit more of an opportunity to, to expand on that conversation. Yes. Exactly. So let's go ahead and take a listen to initially him on NPR. And then we'll go ahead and continue with that conversation that he had with Chris Hayes. Okay. Okay. On the other side, you've got Georgetown Law Professor Paul Butler, who had this response to a caller on NPR who descended from Confederate veterans. I think we need to focus on gun control and not be sidetracked by this. But I'm not somebody who thinks the data flag should stay there, but I certainly honor my ancestors. I have no respect for your ancestors. Uh, as far as your ancestors are concerned, I, I shouldn't be a law professor at Georgetown. I should be a slave. Uh, that's why they fought that war. Uh, I don't understand what it means to be proud of a legacy uh, of, of terrorism and violence. Uh, last week at this time, I was in Israel. The idea that uh, a, a, a German would say, um, you know, that thing we did called the Holocaust, that was wrong, but I respect the courage of my Nazi ancestors, that wouldn't happen. The reason people can say what you said in the United States is, is because, again, black life just doesn't matter to a lot of people. And joining me now is Paul Butler, Georgetown professor of law at Georgetown University. And Paul, I was really uh, struck by the kind of frank honesty of that response, but it, but it gets to the heart of the matter. Do you think we are now having the conversation we should be, or, or is the sort of move against the flag happening with such rapidity that it's actually papering over the actual substance of the issue? It's a necessary conversation, Chris, but it's kind of surreal that it's necessary. I really was expected to provide a list of reasons about why I don't respect people who thought my ancestors were property. That's bizarre, just like it's bizarre that there has to be a special convening of the legislature in South Carolina to debate whether to take down a racist flag. The fact that we have to have that debate, again, is evidence that, that black lives just don't matter that much. You know, some people agree with me on the merits, but they said it was rude uh, to say that I don't respect that uh, woman's ancestors. So let me get this right. Uh, a white person says to a black person, I, I honor the people who wanted your ancestors to be slaves. That's fine. Uh, a black person says, I don't honor those people. That's rude. Again, that's white privilege all over again. And it goes to a larger issue that when black people... That was, wow. That was Paul Butler, who is a professor of law at Georgetown University. He's also a former federal prosecutor, and he was recently on NPR, where, as you saw in that opening segment, he had a caller who, who pretty much said that she honored her, you know, her Confederate ancestors and, and their legacy and he proceeded to tell her well I don't and this is why mm -hmm. and the response to people to him was well that was just rude that you don't respect her ancestors well I guess you could simply say well clearly they didn't respect mine right you know and I, I mm -hmm. this is this is the thing about semantics and conversation uh, the fact that people somehow want to find error, error error in what he said absolutely makes no sense to me whatsoever so I like the fact that he was that was all in with Chris Harris that's mm -hmm. on MSNBC that allowed him to expand this conversation right. more I'm glad he gave him this platform because I think what people do is they pick what they want to hear and then they take that part and then they make that an argument instead of listening to the whole entire conversation and so when he said I don't respect your ancestors you just picked that part and that part was rude but then he proceeded to tell you why why and then that sounds reasonable to me you know and, and I think he was he was spot on he said according to what happened with with the Civil War I'm You're not even supposed to be, be a, 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 a Georgetown professor. University law professor. Not at all. I'm supposed to still be a slave. They thought I had no value. They thought I was only property. Now, when you put that into the proper framework, I'm trying to understand what the problem was. I don't get what the problem He didn't call her a name. He was no. like, look, hussy. <laughs> you know, he didn't go down that right, path with right, her. Right. And this is what I mean. And I like the fact he hit boom on white privilege. How dare you check me? Right. You can't hold me accountable. But what he did, he didn't hold her accountable. He just said, 
You said you respect your ancestors. And but you, I disagree. But you failed to even accept the error and what they thought was right. Right. I, I, and he was like, I disagree, and I'm going to tell you why, and I don't understand why that is a problem. Look, I don't have to agree with you, and I can have a stance, and I can have an ideal, just like you have an ideology of that you respect your ancestors and that kind of thing. I can still have the same type of revere and that kind of feeling for mine. And so I don't get what's rude about it. It's not like, You feel a way about your ancestors. I feel a way about my ancestors. And I'm a, guess what? Look, the two didn't mesh back then. So the reason this has gone on for so long is passive aggressive behavior mm -hmm. by people of color. If mm -hmm. coming out, understand this, if coming out of slavery, we had come out guns a blazing. Now, granted, it wasn't enough of us. That was part of the problem. <laughs> This might be a different landscape, but here's what people will not acknowledge. So when people act, want to act like they're just devoid of this, I said, let me put this in perspective for you. Um, not everybody was on board with the ending of slavery. We know that. Of course. We know the South was staunchly against it. Of course. It was their lifestyle, and for some reason, they thought it was appropriate to have property of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all know that's not appropriate. In any setting, in any country, slavery Anywhere, has always been frowned on upon. any planet, it's you not know, right. And everyone knows that U.S. slavery was one of the most brutal slaveries yes, it was. ever known in history. Yes. You had to literally make people, you had to subjugate people by beating them mm -hmm. and beating down you know, generations so that you could mentally get them to buy into why what, they should be I'm a slave. Doing, exactly. Because the first what group- What I'm doing to you, they're like, oh, oh, this the, not right. The first group wasn't the, going no, for it. Like, I was strolling was like, down the coast, <laughs> minding my own business, and you ran up and grabbed me. We have a problem, okay? <laughs> so it's understand that this whole thing right here is not right, but that's not it. So we decide in 1865 that, okay, it isn't right what we're doing. We're going to end slavery. But wait, 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 wait. We really don't think you're equal to us. So we're going to put you over here and give you bare minimums to survive. Yeah. Now, if people really believed on both sides of this coin, north and south, if they really would have believed that, that slavery was, was wrong, wrong, it would have ended and opportunity would have been provided to everybody. But there was that stubborn sense of entitlement that though I'm going to say you're free, I'm still, still going to treat you like you're garbage. Yes. Okay, Jim Crow is no joke. Seriously. No. No. Understand, you went from saying, okay, you're free physically from shackles, but now I must mentally shackle you by showing you things like you can't drink out this fountain. You can't, you can't sit at this, this counter. You, you have to go you to the back You can't go door. to this school. You can't ride this bus. You can't, I mean, uh, does, that is Systematically, insane. do people understand how much degradation there is to that? Yes. Now, you had generations of people who were exposed to that. Mm -hmm. So by the time you finally got to a point where they had to respect you after the civil rights movement, the damage was already done. Done. So for people to behave as if, well, we ended slavery, okay, but by the way, when you ended it, you made sure that you went from physical shackles to mental, mental shackles. shackles. Even when we tried to do something, we had too much land, they would burn it down. If we had our own church, they would burn it down. If we had our own school, they would burn it down. So it's like anytime, like, okay, we're fine with being over here, but let us have it. Right. Just let, let us have it. We're, we're okay. We'll be over here, but let us have it. I mean, people- But they're like, you're doing too much. Here's the thing. Movies like Rosewood, people thought that was just a dramatic movie. No, no it, it was, wasn't. That it was, was based real. on a community in Florida that yes. was- thriving and independent yes. and because people living around them who happened to be white didn't like the fact yes. that some of these black people actually owned a piano and yes. some other stuff they went in yes. and destroyed and burnt the town to the ground so these early African Americans that were trying to establish themselves and weren't asking for, for anything, anything by the way we never got the 40 acres and a mule FYI right. but whatever that's why reparations that conversation is back on the table but you know what's funny about that is when you now say that to people they say reparations well uh, why? You can't give it to us now. Why? No, 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 no. You can. It just has to be under a whole different premise, and it's going to be complicated. But understand, during World War II, when Japanese Americans were put in concentration camps here in California, they did a lawsuit, and they were paid reparations. So you explain to me why you put me in slavery, not me, but you put people in slavery, you promised them something and never gave it to them, but now when black people say they, they think reparations should be given, I think it's going to be complicated because Very, we're so far removed. Right. But it, I could come up with a couple of my own plans that could make it work. Let's but we're told that we're wrong because we're asking something that was due to this particular race of people. The atrocities. I mean, people always focus on the Holocaust, and don't get me wrong. It, it, was, brutal, it was wrong. And it, it was, was brutal. Mean, and it was horrible. When I was Absolutely. in Europe and I went to Auschwitz and I walked that, I can't imagine. It was heartbreaking mm -hmm. to me. But you understand that Jewish people never let that go, and they won't let you forget. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, everybody wants people of color, specifically black people, to forget what was done to them. And you're told a lot of current situations 
on a result of that. Some of it is, some of it isn't. Right. Some people decide we're pushing on. We're, we're right. moving forward. Right. I can't let this stop me. Right. I'm going to be a professor at Georgetown. You know, I'm going to be I'm a gonna, doctor. I'm, I'm going to be gonna a doctor. school teacher. Gonna, yes. And yes. it can happen, but understand. It's hard. It's hard. There's a lot it's of hard. You talk to the average person, they don't want to talk about how they made it, but I guarantee you it was, it was layers of layers and often situations of families that made a lot of sacrifice mm -hmm. so it could happen. Yes. Think about it. When you finally hear someone say first generation to go to college. Yes. And like 2000 anything. Yes. You say what? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Because it's a mindset. So for her to make that comment and for him to give that response back, he didn't call her a name. He did not. He just rebuttaled her what I thought was being honest. Intelligent. It there, was intelligent. There was no way you could respond to that where it wasn't going to be offensive in some way. Right. Be offended. Because the right. problem is black people never want to offend anybody. It's time right. to start offending people. Because you know what? I think a lot of people already feel offended enough. Mm -hmm. Passive aggressive behavior from people digs a really deep hole. Yes. Now, and then when they come out, they come out swinging and that's never good. But because but, it's, but it's like, you, it's enough is enough. When you just finally like, ah, I got to go get the flag. I'll just get it down. It's enough. You have to take drastic measures because if you don't, nobody takes you seriously. It's like, oh, well, we don't do it later when we feel like do it. It's right. like, like no. said, a special session has to come into order. Right. But here's the thing. It goes beyond South Carolina. Absolutely. Just about does. every state in the South is guilty of this. Absolutely. One, because there were people in power, they could do it and get away with it, and the people who lived there didn't, didn't push hard enough for it to end. I said from the beginning, the fact that how do you live as as a person of color, how do you live in 